Hello uh, from the beginning of a bike ride which was originally going to be on the Monday of this week off and I thought oh yes I'll do it on the Monday if I'm going to knacker myself it will maximise the time till I'm back at work and then things happened that meant I had to have a day out on a Monday rather than a Tuesday or a Wednesday and so here I am uh, on the northern section of the Cambridgeshire busway. Apologies for the background noise, I'll flip the camera around. It's just over here is a well, maybe not massive but fairly sizable building site which I think is part of Cambridge Science Park. So they're not too far, probably about a 10 minute bike ride away from Cambridge North Station at the moment, possibly less than that. And so all of that's been going on for months and the only talk of the main talk of building work you have around here is oh they're going to build stuff next to Cambridge North Station and no they haven't built anything yet so um, I'll make this one a short one because it's quite noisy around here and I'm probably on the wrong side of the busway or the bike lane at any rate and everyone's having to swerve out my way so um, I'll, I'll, I'll check back with you guys um, when I'm somewhere a little bit more picturesque so I promise somewhere picturesque um, not exactly a lie because what I'm about to show you was a massive surprise because I haven't been down this way for possibly over a year and then suddenly I get to this bridge I'm currently under the busiest road in the area which is the A14 and there's huge oh morning Mickey there's this huge graffiti under under here on the busway massive massive incredibly well done actually and I just posted a, um, I couldn't get a, it's so huge, I couldn't even take a wide angle photograph of it on the phone. And short of walking over there, which would require crossing the busway, and it's not really legal. Not really legal, understandably, to be on the busway. It is in fact against the law to be on the busway. Oh, morning Ian. Um, Um, beat by busway drivers, even though I'm not even on the busway, I'm on the cycle path, it's next to the bus. Is that what do you pass the train? Well, no, I'm not under the, I'm not under the railway, Nicky. I'm, I'm, I'm under the A14. So if you go back that way, we're probably now about 15-20 minutes bike ride from Cambridge North. Morning Richard. Um, so yeah, it's huge, absolutely massive, biggest piece of graffiti I've seen in the Cambridge area. And if you're Simpsons fan, like I am, um, you all know who this fella is. Dude. You can tell there's like no CCTV or anything down here. Look at it all. Uh, so I'll, I will slowly walk back to my bike. I'm a little, I haven't locked it, so I'm a little bit wary of leaving it when I haven't locked it because I have had bikes nicked before in the Cambridge area. And I know it's quiet round here, but you're right near, at this point, you're right near housing. And, um, Sheesh, look at it. It's, it's just a terrible place, because I mean, who'd walk across the busway and stand over there to take a picture of it? I'm sure the people who did it would, but um, I'd rather not. Goodness knows what this thing is. The mind boggles. <laughs> oh, it's Garfield. I've only just worked out it's Garfield. His feet are there, and he's his eyes, he's asleep. Oh, wow. And it says further on the words track and field. I mean, track and field to me is a 1983 84 arcade game. I promise I'll try and do a sort of live from somewhere a little bit quieter later on. But um, having just spotted Garfield, I, I want to try and do another panorama. So I'll, I'll end this one here and I'll get back to you guys later.
I'm now almost at Histon and I've spent the past couple of minutes just photographing photographing this huge mural and this seems to be all professionally done so it's hard to know whether you start falling into an area of what do you define it as is it street art if it's actually professionally done and someone's been hired in to do it it's very incredibly well done someone clearly had hours and hours to work on this it certainly it shows you the difference between bits of things that are knocked together by someone with 10 15 maybe half an hour with a spray can and someone who's got hours and hours and is being paid to do something and certainly some of it at, at least seems to be a tribute to um i just would go live when yeah it is well it's it's a professional it's a professional street artist um it's this huge amazing shark which for some reason i can fit in i think it's because in video the iphone shoots in 16 by 9 i was trying to take a picture of it on the iphone and squeeze it all in and the wide angle on the iphone's not wide enough but i've got one of my cameras with me with a 16 millimeter lens and i could just squeeze it in on full wide angle never thought it till today but i need a better wide angle lens because now and again you encounter stuff that you can't step too far away from in this case for safety reasons See, there's a thing up here. This wall is a legal site maintained by Kilo Sin. So this guy's clearly been hired by, I guess, the council, who are one of the partners in running the busway. This is just amazingly well done. Look at it all. I wasn't even here last time I was down this way, which must have been about two years ago. But. But by contrast, on the other side of this bridge, on the other side of the busway, this is clearly illegal street art, illegal graffiti. And, I mean, it's well done, but this wall here, clearly they've been able to clean the wall first and get it back to the sort of raw, relatively light grey concrete colour. And this wall, it's some bloke, possibly more than one bloke, I'm saying bloke, there are female computers. And, um, I mean, it's quite well done, but compared to what I've just been photographing as well, it's, 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 it's quite a contrast. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to get on and then I'll, I'll do another live when I'm somewhere else of interest. So, well, like I just said in the title, this is the former Histon Railway Station. I'm guessing the only reason it's not been demolished is because it's listed. Every time I come down here, it's in a worse state. It's such a shame. But, um, yeah, I will be heading that way shortly, and the busway continues in that direction. Uh, but we're short distance from a couple of places of interest, sort of just behind me sort of that way it's an odd thing to mention but it's a personal um, fact that um, we're just about to come up to the third anniversary of when we lost mum and uh, that's where Richard Stebbings the funeral director's business address is last time I was <laughs> literally the last time I was down here certainly not on a bike, was um, visiting mum in the Chapel of Rest, which is a odd thing, but very true. Um, oh, what else are we? And sort of know this area because I've worked down here. Uh, so the, yeah, this has totally been re reworked since I worked down here. I used to, I did three years doing seasonal work at um, Histon at um, Chibbers, which is I don't really want to walk all the way over there to show you, but... Um, so yeah, the road used to run, before they put all the busway in, and when I used to work down here, the, ro the line of the road is just here, and still is here of course, because it has to go straight into Histon. And so you've got the Railway View pub here, 
There's a small corner shop there where I used to buy the Daily Mirror. I've never been on the busway yet, Andrew. I, I mean to keep meaning to get round to it. It doesn't really go anywhere I'd like to go. I mean, you can get on the busway and go to St Ives. St Ives is quite interesting. I'll get round to it. There's <laughs> way more interesting places you can get on a train and go to from Cambridge than a bus. Uh, so where was I? Yeah, Railway View, the corner shop, and so almost opposite the corner shop, a little bit further on, is this industrial estate which I'm just about to go sort of behind or to one side of. And at the very back of that industrial estate is Chivers. And I worked in the mincemeat department of Chivers on a seasonal basis from 95 to 1997. Uh, not the happiest of times. Simpler, less complex times maybe, certainly financially, because they paid me weekly and it was quite easy to save up for stuff. And so around then I bought my first TV that I'd bought with my own money. I bought a VHS machine. Um, oh God, what else did I get around then? Can't think actually. Bought a few things. Oh yes, Pocket Telly. Pocket Telly I bought around that time. Ooh, another bus. Probably should have brought my proper headset microphone, but um, hopefully talking close to the phone is good enough. So yeah, I'll continue onwards now after photographing. I haven't photographed it yet. I'll take a photograph of it. And then... Um, not quite sure what the next point of interest is, but I'll, I'll do another live. Got to get the phone on charge now, though. Hello again. Uh, this will just be a short one, because uh, I've reached the... What, what can be called the turning around, but it's still a reasonably long distance till I head back home. But, oh God, I can barely see it on the phone screen. Just... Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Stupid thing. I'll point at it. Just there is a sign that says public footpath to the village of Girton, one mile. And uh, this I discovered, mm, I can't remember how long ago it was, two, three, four years ago. It's actually a good turnaround point if you're going to do this as a bike ride and not make it insanely long. I have once done the 12 miles all the way to St Ives and back, it half killed me. It took about a week for my muscles to recover. Oh, God, she's way in the distance now. I just had a, a lady jogger, lady runner go past me, pouring with sweat, look half, she look, did not look in a particularly good state. See, this is why I don't do running as a hobby. If, if, if exercise makes you look that worn out and that unwell I can't see how it can be doing you any good oh look there's someone else running towards me I think I'm going to finish this now and start heading towards Girton because it's the point at which it gets a little bit complicated because I have to consult the GPS on my phone to work my way through Girton back to the main road this is going to be another short one oh I'm finally somewhere quiet I've come away from the busway. Um, so yeah, believe it or not, this track that I'm currently pointing at, that's a public footpath. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what this is here because it's got as if there's been vehicles down it. And so yeah, we were literally next to a farmer's field, not far from not too far from Histon. And so you've got a somewhat overgrown gate and then a horrible couple of bits like railway sleepers. So I've got to lift the bike over those. <laughs> and then there's the worst path on earth that eventually leads me to a road that will get me to Girton. <laughs> I'm almost lost for words because it, the, the busway path isn't perfect, but it's it's like luxury compared to this. I, I, I when I when I last came down here, I 
put, I've got my camera mount here on the bike and I, I videoed, I'm not quite sure if I videoed all the way to Girton because I think the battery ran out in the camera, but I certainly videoed around this area and unless I, I haven't got a camera mount for my, or a proper GoPro yet, I will get round to getting one eventually. But I only do bike rides two or three times a year, so it's hard to justify getting one. And so, yeah, I'm about to just... So I won't be videoing anything going down there today. It's just all... sort of level of vibration. It's a little insane. So that's about, I don't know, quarter of a mile, half a mile, and you eventually reach a road, but... I mean, it's quite beautiful, but you just... You're just in the middle of nowhere, which is quite nice. You can see a main road in that direction, so that may well be, might be the A14, A604. But I'm sort of heading from memory, because I've only done this once before. It's up this way, as I've already said. And then you reach a road, and I think you have to turn left and you end up in Girton, but you're right on the, you're just outside Girton. So, um,. As it gets so complicated now, I will be switching to GPS, so I won't be doing another live, really, until I know that I'm heading in the right direction. Now, last time I came down there on, on a bike ride, which must be, oh, possibly about four years ago, I'm, just to my right, you'll see there's a phone box, and, um, Back then it was like, it was run down, there was, I think the phone was just about to be taken away by BT, and um, it's still here, it's still a phone box, but um, it's now full of gorgeous flowers. It was maintained by a group of local gardeners and someone's put their phone number nearby it, and better than it being run down. Some of them that are in Cambridge that have still got a phone in are in a terrible state now. And look at it, it's been repainted. It's lovely. This is in the village of um, Girton. <laughs> Do not smoke in the phone box. <laughs> Good luck getting in it now. And there's herbs there and everything. Amazing. Oh well. I better get on. I'm getting starving. I'll I'll find somewhere to stop. I've got a banana with me to eat. Did promise I'd show you somewhere gorgeous eventually. Uh, this is St Andrew's Church, Girton. Oh. And. There are probably quicker routes here to my house, but about three and a half, no, no, about three hours into this bike ride, I finally get somewhere this gorgeous and photogenic and picturesque. And then, then I go, oh, would it be nice to live in Girton? Hi, Heather, this is, I think, the first one of these lives you've come on. Um, but yeah, it, Absolutely gorgeous. And I said to Dad when I left, oh, I'll be home for lunch, and I will, because I'm only about 20 minutes bike ride from the centre of town now, so I'll definitely be home by one o'clock. But, um, so, oh, it's a lovely part of Girton, this. Apart from the fact that we're a cough and a spit away from the A604 and the A14, so it's just all traffic. There's barely any peace and quiet. So, just near the local school for, for Girton. Uh, this is a sort of village room. And as, the, as you'd expect, there's been a church as a war memorial. And I'm starving. I've, I've just eaten a banana and I'm still starving. Don't know how people can do jogging. You see joggers out, and I've seen two people today who look knackered. And all they have with them is like a bottle of water. Like a bottle of water. I would get starving hungry. Absolutely. Could not do jogging as I'll be. Not me at all. 
I like my bike. Oh, I'll bring I'll bring you the I'll bring you the chimes of midday. Hopefully you can hear the chimes over the traffic. Yeah, it's just finished. I'm gonna drop off now because I'm trying to get back to the main road and start heading home. But I um, hope you feel better, Sue Helen, uh, Heather. Oh, <laughs> a bit knackered. <laughs> Still, I've picked out a good film for this afternoon. Well, at least I hope it's a good film. I don't think I've ever seen it. Ah, uh, well, hello. I'm trying to work out where what what will be. This is probably the penultimate one of these. Um, so yeah, we're, we're right on the edge of Girton here, and uh, in that direction there is where I'm just about to turn left and head back into Cambridge. Um, by contrast, this phone box, nowhere near as good a state as the other two actually in Girton itself. The one I did a live from, as I said, it's gorgeous, it's full of flowers. The other one which I didn't do a live from, but I did take some photographs of. That one is um, a community book sharing place. But this one could do with a lick of paint. I think its phone is long gone. I'm not sure if it's listed. I suppose some phone boxes get listed. But I mean, it's right next to some bike racks. And that's probably only because we're just outside um, Girton College, which is, as far as I know, the only college of Cambridge University that's outside the city limits. I mean, we're only just outside the city limits. We're like less than half a mile away from a, one of those signs by the side of the road that says Cambridge, but... Yep, there we are. Another phone box, and as I say, I'll probably do about one more of these before I get home. Now, apologies for the background noise, <laughs> but I'm now slap bang next to Huntington Row, but it is quite an easy and obvious place to post the last live from. Uh, well, let's flip the camera. So for, for, for non-locals, here's a potted guide to the, uh, I never know what to call them, but the various districts of Cambridge. You've got Jesus Fitzroy, which is near the Grafton Centre, Kite area, which is the original name for the area that is now the Grafton Centre area, Brunswick, uh, which used to be where the Brunswick School was, and it's now all, it's not too far from where I live, and it's all redeveloped into housing. And in the more downtown districts here, we've got, uh, well, let's zoom, cannot get these things to zoom anymore. Uh, you've got Quayside, which is of course obviously uh, right by the River Cam, Queen's near Queen's College, Downing near Downing College, and Regent Street, which is almost slap bang in the middle of town. So I will leave it there and say goodbye to you. Hope you're having a good Wednesday. Uh, what else can I add? Oh, that I'm within walking distance of three other uni Cambridge University colleges, just over there. I think I've had Christmas dinner at all of these places. Just over there where that crane is, is Murray Edwards College, which formerly New Hall. I think that was built in either the 1950s or the 60s. Uh, over here, this, there might even be four. This is, I think, Fitzwilliam College. Back that way is... Trinity Hall. So yeah, there's three. There's at least three down here. And with nobody watching at all, even though it's lunchtime, I'll say goodbye. And hope you've enjoyed the little bits of my bike ride I've shared with you.